Good morning everyone. Welcome back to GK today. And today we'll be discussing most important MCQs for 24th of January 2023. Let's start with our session. India's first online gaming center of excellence is to be set up in which state or the union territory. So Minister of State for Electronics and IT, Mr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar has recently announced that India's first center of excellence of online gaming will be set up in Shillong in the state of Meghalaya by March 2023. And uh, this center of excellence will be set up under the Digital India Startup Hub through the Software Technology Parks of India. Fine. And talking about the Software Technology Parks of India, it is an autonomous society in the field of science and technology and it works under the Ministry of Electronics and IT. Okay, so this first online gaming center of excellence of India is to be set up in the state of Meghalaya. Now also you have to remember that recently Rajasthan government has implemented a policy for blindness control with the objective of right to sight okay so the state department of medical and health released the policy document for prevention of blindness and under the policy rajasthan government will run keratoplasty centers and eye banks at all the government medical colleges in a mandatory manner okay so you can be asked that which state government has implemented a policy for blindness control. This state is Rajasthan. Next is, which union ministry runs the MARC platform? And the MARC stands for Mentorship, Advisory, Assistance, Resilience and Growth. So, Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, which works under Ministry of Commerce and Industry, with the support of Zone Startups, India held the Mark Mentor Masterclass. Okay, so this is a national mentorship platform and it is a one stop platform to facilitate mentorship for the startups across the country. Okay, so it is related to Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Now, if you're asked that which union ministry is associated with National Aquifer Mapping and management program. So National Aquifer Mapping and Management Program is set to be completed in one year. And the aim is to delineate aquifer and water availability. So Director General of National Mission for Clean Ganga, which works under Union Minister of Jal Shakti, inaugurated a three-day conference on water reclamation and reuse which is organized by FIKI and International Water Association. So this aquifer program would help to develop further plans for groundwater management. Fine. And what is the full form of FIKI? It is the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Okay. So here correct answer would be Ministry of Jal Shakti. Next is Shang Jun Cheng, who was seen in the news recently, plays which sport? So this 17 year old player recently created history by becoming the first male Chinese player to win an Australian Open main draw singles match. Okay. So China has basically earned his first tour level win in four tries besides clinching his first major win. And there are total seven Chinese women in the singles draw, which is led by the veteran Zhang. Shuai, who is ranked at 22nd place in the world. Okay, so he is related to tennis basically. Next is which state organized an international book fair recently? So the first edition of Chennai International Book Fair recently began in Chennai in the state of Tamil Nadu. And this fair has been organized by the Directorate of Public Libraries. Tamil Nadu Text Book and 
Educational Services Corporation and Booksellers and Publishers Association of South India. So basically it focuses on facilitating the exchange of knowledge between the publishers in Tamil Nadu and those from across the world. And aim is to provide a platform for literacy and the culture exchange with a number of Tamil books on display, Tamil publishing houses as participants and stalls put up by total 30 countries. Fine. So recently Tamil Nadu has organized its international book fair. Fine. Next is which city is the host of the G20 infrastructure working group meeting. So the first G20 infrastructure working group meeting under G20 India presidency will take place in Pune in the state of Maharashtra. And this meeting will be joined by the IWG member countries, the guest countries and international organizations. So Department of Economic Affairs, which works under Ministry of Finance, will host this two-day IWG meeting along with Australia and Brazil as the co-chairs. Fine. So this is an important question. You have to remember that the host for G20 infrastructure working group meeting is Pune City. Now apart from it, recently Swiggy has rolled out their ambulance service for the delivery partners and its dependents to help its active delivery executives and their dependents in the case of emergency. Okay. So to access the free ambulance service, the delivery executives can reach out on a toll free number in case of an emergency before, during or after our delivery. And as per a recent study in 2020 to 21, 77 lakh workers were engaged in India's gig economy basically. Okay. So you can be asked that which delivery company has launched ambulance service for delivery partners and its dependent. Answer would be Swiggy. Next is Sanjeev Chadha is the MD and CEO of which bank? So government has extended the tenure of MD and CEO of Bank of Baroda, Mr. Sanjeev Chadha till June 20. 23. So his three year tenure ended in January 2023, but the appointment committee of the cabinet has approved the proposal of Department of Financial Services for extending his term. And the Financial Services Institution Bureau recommended Union Bank of India E.B. Rajneesh Karnatak for the position of MD and CEO in Bank of India. Fine. So at present, Sanjeev Chadha is the MD and CEO of Bank of Baroda till June 2023. Okay. Next is Indian cricket team defeated which country with the margin of 317 runs? So we have defeated the country Sri Lanka by the largest ever margin of 317 runs in the last ODI and clinched the series by 3-0. So Indian team broke the record for largest victory by runs in ODI at the final match of the series that was held in Thiruvananthapuram, and India broke New Zealand's record of 290 runs. So India basically posted a score of 390 in total, 50 overs and the Sri Lanka could only reach to 73. Fine. So recently we have created this new record of 300. 17 runs. So which two countries are involved in it? India and Sri Lanka. Next is Yuki Bhambri and Saket Mainini who were seen in the news recently play which sport? So Indian tennis team of Yuki Bhambri and Saket Mainini has won the Bangkok Open title recently. And this is their sixth title together on the ATP Challenger Tour. And now Yuki and Saket will next compete in the Australian Open, which is the season's first Grand Slam. Okay, so your correct answer would be tennis. They are related to tennis. Next is Kollam, which became the first constitution literate district in India, is located in which Indian state? So Kollam is the first constitution literate district in India, 
and the Chief Minister of Kerala State, Mr. Pinray Vijayan, conferred the honor on the district. Okay, so the citizen is the constitution literacy campaign. It was jointly launched by the Kollam District Panchayat, District Planning Committee, and the Kerala Institute of Local Administration. And as a part of the campaign, thousands of new literates were educated on the Indian Constitution. Fine. So you have to remember which is the first constitution literate district of India. It is Kollam. And in which state does this Kollam lie? Answer would be Kerala. Now I'm sure you would have heard about Parak these days. What is this? So National Council for Educational Research and Training means NCRT has notified India's first national assessment regulator named as Parak. So it will basically work on setting the norms, standards and guidelines for the student assessment and evaluation for all the recognized school boards in the country. So the Educational Survey Division of NCRT will function as Parak in the initial phase and later on it will be extended across the country. Fine. So you can be asked that Parak, which was in the news recently, is a regulator body related to which field. So this is a regulator body in the field of education. Fine. Next is Parho Pardesh scheme was being implemented by which union ministry? So Ministry of Minority Affairs has discontinued the Parho Pardesh scheme. So under the scheme, students who belong to minority communities, including Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Buddhist, Zen, and the Parsis are eligible to obtain the interest subsidy on their loans for pursuing higher studies abroad, right? And the Indian Banks Association notified the banks about the discontinuation of the scheme from 2022 up to 23, fine? So your correct answer would be Ministry of Minority Affairs. Next is Shubman Gill, who was seen in the news recently, is associated with which sport? So Indian opener Shubman Gill recently hit his first double century in 149 balls against the country New Zealand in the first of three ODIs. And uh, he smashed a brilliant 208 runs with a strike rate of 139.59 with total 19 boundaries and 9 sixes. Okay. And uh, also he became the youngest batter to score a double century. So with this, he joined an allied list comprising of Sachin Tendulkar, Rohit Sharma, Ishan Kishan, Fakhar Zaman, Virendra Sehwag, Chris Gale, and Martin Guptil. Okay. So here, Shubman Gill is associated with cricket. The last question says, which media company presented the Excellence in Governance Awards for District Magistrate? So Indian Express Media Group presents the Excellence in Governance Awards to the District Magistrate. And Union Home Minister Amit Shah handed over the awards for innovative and good governance to 18 district magistrates at the Indian Express Excellence in Governance Award Ceremony that was held in New Delhi. Fine. So this award is presented by Indian Express. So these are the most important current affairs from today. And now let's start with December 2022 current affairs reason part. And this is the 14th edition in this series. So in this session, we'll be doing the questions from 196 up to 100, sorry, up to 210. Okay. Question number 196 says, which state recently passed the Freedom of Religion Amendment Act? So recently, this act has been passed by Uttarakhand state government. And according to this amended bill, forced conversion in the state will come under the category of crime. Fine. And apart from a maximum imprisonment of up to 10 years, those persons who are indulged in forceful and unlawful conversion in Uttarakhand will be slapped with a fine of 50,000 rupees at least. Okay. Who has been accused by the House 
January 6th committee for the US Capitol riot. So House January 6th committee recently released the final report on US Capitol riot and uh, US former president Donald Trump was found to be accused. As of 2022, who is the most expensive player in IPL history? This is Sam Curran and he is an England player. Okay, so he became the most expensive player in IPL history in the 18.5 crore rupees deal that has been signed by Punjab Kings. And also Ben Stokes became Chennai's Super Kings costliest player who was signed at 16.25 crore rupees. While Sunrisers Hyderabad has bought Harry Brook for 13.25 crore rupees. Which metro service in India has completed 20 years of its operation? This is Delhi Metro. Okay. And it started in December 2002 with a corridor of just 8.2 kilometers at that time. And now the corridor spans to 392 kilometers. Union Minister Anurag Singh Thakur inaugurated the Sports Science Center in which particular city? So, our Union Minister for Youth Affairs and Sport, Mr. Anurag Singh Thakur has inaugurated the Sports Science Center in Udupi. Can you tell me Udupi lies in which particular state? Do let me know in the comments. And this center will bring together sports scientists and athletes basically. So, the government has spent 2700 crore rupees to enhance the sporting infrastructure for a period of total 5 years. Next is, which institution has set up Central Excise and Service Tax Settlement Commission. So, Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs has constituted this commission and aim is to resolve and settle the show cause notices which are issued under the Custom Act, Central Excise Act and Service Tax Regime. So, this move would ensure speedy disposal of cases under the old indirect tax regime. Fine. Veer Baldevas observed to mark the martyrdom of the sons of which Sikh Guru. Actually, Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid respect to Zorawar Singh and Fateh Singh, who are the sons of 10th Sikh Guru, Guru Gobind Singh, who laid down their lives while defending their faith. So, 26th of December is observed as Veer Baldevas in India. Fine. Reserve Bank of India has mandated the banks in the country to renew their locker agreement by which date? So RBI has mandated the banks in the country to renew their locker agreements with existing locker customers by 1st of January 2023. And all the existing locker depositors are now required to furnish proof of eligibility for a renewed locker arrangement. Okay. Which multinational company has approached and clad against Competition Commission of India order on unfair business practices. So Google has approached to National Company Law Appellate Tribunal and it has basically challenged the CCI order on unfair business practices in Android mobile device. Actually CCI has slapped a penalty of 1337 crore rupees on Google for abusing its dominant position in multiple markets in relation to Android mobile devices. Fine. Which institution initiated a study of fees and expenses of mutual fund? This is SEBI. SEBI has said that they have initiated a detailed study of fees and expenses charged by the mutual fund. Next is, which country has banned the women from working for domestic and foreign NGOs? So Taliban has banned women from working for domestic and foreign non-governmental organizations in the country Afghanistan. Which country has been most hit by the Arctic winter storm? This country is USA. Which country has announced that it will no longer publish daily COVID numbers? This is China. China has now decided that they will no longer be publishing daily data on COVID-19 case figures for the country. Because the health agency has been publishing the numbers for the past three years and uh, now it is also not known how frequently China will update this COVID information. Who is the only Indian player in the top 25 in the Forbes annual list of the highest paid female athlete 
in the world. This is PV Sindhu. PV Sindhu is the only Indian player in the top 25 in the Forbes annual list of highest paid female athlete in the world. Who has topped this list? This is Naomi Osaka. Naomi Osaka is from the country Japan and she has topped the list for the third straight year. Shahri Vikas Pradhikaran is the official portal of which state? This is the official portal of Haryana state. And now the Chief Minister of Haryana, Mr. Manohar Lal Khattar has mentioned that the families with annual incomes of 1,80,000 rupees are being brought under the BPL family category. Okay. So basically this portal will begin its citizen facilitation center. So this is the official portal of Haryana state. So these are the next most important 15 questions from the month of December. And uh, now two days are left only to finish this month. And uh, after that, we'll switch to November month. Okay. So tomorrow we'll be doing the questions from 211 up to 225. Now let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide, you can see five questions which have been taken from the past two, three days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions. And at the end of the lecture, do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today. And we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. And please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this, Meenus Hatsana signing off.